Is it possible to make a baby with a god? There's only one way to find out. Today we beat the final boss in Cult of the Lamb, enslave him and use the features of the Sins of the Flesh update to create a cult of cute little furry animals and let them dance naked, drink beer and cannibalize each other to generate enough sin to try and make a baby with an actual god. This is, well, us. A sacrificial lamb on his way to get sacrificed to stop some kind of silly prophecy. These are the bishops of the old faith, who we have to kill to free the god of death we meet after we get beheaded. And by freeing him, I mean enslaving him. To aid us in our new bishop slaying quest, he grants us with another chance of life. And his crown of holy superpowers. How nice! Imbued with our new godly powers, we set foot in the world of the living once again. Ready to kick some bishop ass. But they were already gone, so instead we kicked some old faith cultist butts and we met Retau in the forest, who has also been a vessel for the god of death once, but apparently that didn't work out that well. We continued through the forest and used our sword to slay some more cultists, to eventually get to a room with our first slave, I, I mean our first follower. We roll around dodging like a first time Dark Souls player and we wiggled our sword around to kill the enemies and save our first follower. And like that, we complete our first mission and get teleported to a clearing in the forest. Ratao explains to us that this is the place where we can start building our own cult. Let's welcome our first victim, Smogi. Welcome to the cult and to the great godly eugenics program. Together with Smogi, I gathered enough resources to build a cooking fire and I used it to cook him a locally harvested berry bowl. To unlock more buildings, we need to level up devotion, which we get through followers praying at the shrine, which we don't have yet. We need coins for that and we find those during crusades. So we set out on our first crusade in the lands of the old faith to find some of those sweet coins. To get to the final boss of each of the four areas we have to beat each area three times. And on the fourth time we will encounter the area's boss, one of the bishops. And after killing all four of the bishops, chains will break loose, freeing the one who waits, which makes us able to enslave him. That's a lot of crusading we have to do. We met Leshy, the first bishop, for the first time while on the last floor of the crusade. And he warned us with some tough talk and turned one of his followers into Amducius, the first mini boss, who wasn't really nice to us. Fortunately, we got a potion tarot card and together with him being a very first easy boss, we managed to beat him without getting hit. And the cute little lamb we are, we shamboozled him back to the cult to await his indoctrination. And we chose stones as a crusade reward. I just love me my stones. We headed back to the cult and welcomed Amducius and named him a Karioth. And although he had very bad skills, we still took him in. Together we built a shrine and this made Rathau happy. So he granted us with the Vixian, who's now bound to a lifetime of full-time worshipping. We continue to build the most important building of the cult, the temple. Here we can perform daily sermons to gain crown levels, which unlock better weapons and armor for in the crusades. And the more cultists we have, the faster this will go. We also need commandment stones to start declaring doctrines to the followers. So time for the next crusade. This crusade we got a slow but hard hitting axe to work with. And we unlocked the crown abilities, which are basically spells to use during the crusade. We cleared some more rooms and found a necklace that gives more devotion. We freed another follower and we met Haro. A mysterious owl thing that handed us the commandment stones. Well, that was easy. We continued the crusade until we got to the mini boss Falafar. And I died. I freaking died. Fortunately, we are the vessel of the god of death. So we get infinite second chances. I teleported back to the cult and here the Vixian did enough worshipping to unlock us a new divine inspiration. Which is like a tech tree. And we picked follower beds. Just to make their pathetic life a little easier. After which Wasabi Soup joined the cult. And I ended the day by cleaning some follower poop. After that we used the first commandment stone to unlock our first ritual, the bonfire ritual. That lets us dance around a bonfire, improving the follower faith. The faith meter slowly drains when time passes and also when your followers experience stuff they don't like. And it refills when stuff happens that they do like, such as bonfire rituals. To perform the rituals you need bones that you can find during the crusades, which we haven't found yet. So I did the daily sermon, unlocked some more spells to use during the crusades and headed out for another crusade. However, just outside the temple, Smogi asked me to make him some grassy gruel and let him eat it. Yeah. Whatever. This made him happy and increased the faith by a good amount. 
So on the next crusade, we got the dagger. My favorite weapon by far. Just look at me go. We used the dagger to clear the crusade until we got to Falafar once again. And this time, because of my amazing skills, we clapped him hard. Back at the cult, I unlocked farm plots and the farming bundle. Built some bedrolls and welcomed Toxic and Spiff to the cult. Things were going pretty well. The guys were working and worshipping hard. I blessed them to increase their loyalty level. I went over to Ratau's house to get beaten in a stupid dice game three times in a row before I was able to beat him. We built a farm and I gave the cult a truly unique name. What? At least Smoggy likes it, jeez. We also had enough devotion to level up the cult to level 2. Making the shrine and the temple more effective while also unlocking more buildings. During the crusade we clapped some weirdos and we got to your boy Leshy. Hiding in his temple behind the locked door. There we go. Oh. Whoa, you ugly, bruh. Luckily, I got the knife, and since I am known as the knife god in CSGO, this was an easy fight. No, really, it was a really easy fight. Almost hitless. Well, thanks for your heart, Leshy. We did it. The first of the bishops was down. One who waits, here we come. But this is where I found out that the new update content was gated behind the third bishop. So I wanted to speed up the process and get to the update content. And then I made a big mistake. I went through the second door into Anura, a land ruled by Hecate, the second bishop. After beating the first boss, Gushin, the one who waits, awarded us with the sacrifice ritual. And right here on the reward screen, I thought the game was on pause. So I went AFK. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't on pause. And upon returning to the cult, more than half of the followers died of hunger. I even tried a safe scum, but alas, to no avail. The Vixian, Wasabi Soup, Lamar, Toxic and even Akarioth were all dead. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I nearly gave up here. So much effort to get all of the followers and I was already a few hours in. I was so done with it. However, I looked myself in my sheepy eyes and I recuperated. Because I realized I had another trick up my sleeve. I mummified all of the dead, dug them some body pits, buried their bodies next to the temple and organized a sermon for my two remaining followers. And... Holy sh**! Yeah, quite literally. Just look at that! It's beautiful! <laughs> After beholding this marvel of nature, I welcomed Amila and Cooler to the cult. After which we could do another sermon that gave us enough Jesus juice to unlock the ritual of resurrection. And while it does have a cooldown and costs a lot of bones, we could now slowly start bringing back our perished followers. The first one to bring back was Toxic, because he's the youngest and will give the most bang for our buck. Welcome back Toxic! During the next crusade we got a rainbow card. Yup, it was useless so we didn't take it, but I still wanted to show you guys. Shiny. We did clap the fat bad boss though. We quickly got back to the amount of followers we had before the AFK debacle. And we welcomed Eep and Weber. We met Mushroom Boy close to the base who would later give us the brainwash ritual. Increasing the faith by 80 and locking it for two days. Really useful to do before you start torturing everybody. If I'm high, I won't know the difference. We also got a quest to recruit a dissenter. Who constantly runs around and yells at people how bad the cult is. Let that be a warning. On the next crusade we met Kamak, the relic dealer. Relics are like chargeable ultimate attacks with all kind of different effects. This time we got a lightning strike thing. Very nice. We beat Sapar at the end of the crusade and went back to the cult to do the daily chores, the sermon and another resurrection. Welcome back Lamar. The next bishop to kill was going to be Hecate, and I was ready for it. We cruised through the crusade with ease, and met Hecate at his temple, and... Oh god. And here's me thinking you were ugly before you transformed. It was a long and tough fight. Hecate has a great variety of skills and a ton of HP. And after what felt like an eternity, we managed to kill him. Two bishops down, two to go. Oh, you just wait. 
<laughs> you see what I did there? Just wait. Okay, never mind. Just look at all the guys we have now. It is awesome. And there's only one more boss to go before we can finally get to the Sins of the Flesh content. On the next crusade we went to Anchor Deep, an underwatery place under the rule of Calamar. We did all the crusades and killed the mini-bosses. Salios, Harborim and Balzebub. And after that we summoned Ikarioth back to life who is going to play a vital role later on. Because we researched the summoning stone, we could now turn two of our companions into demons to assist us during the crusades. And we headed to Anchor Deep to face the third bishop, Calamar. And this fight? This was truly something else. His attacks are crazy bullet storms and... Yeah, I died again. However, we were able to sacrifice someone to keep ourselves alive. And we picked Toxic, because he had the most HP. I'm sorry, boy. And thanks to the hit points Toxic gave us, we were able to beat Calamar. But then, something strange happened after the daily sermon. Finally. Sin showed itself to us, and we were now able to hold sinful activities to generate, well, sin. And we need that sin to create babies. And we all know whose babies we want. So the first thing we did was unlock the Rite of Lust. And we did the Rite. Which is basically a day off for all of the cultists and dancing around the shrine naked. Until our boy Pleido was consumed by the sin of all these activities. And we harvested it. We now had Sin, but we couldn't make a mating tent yet. So we went about to do the usual stuff. We built some tents, harvested some foods, sacrificed Eep because he was freaking constantly stealing my stuff. And we went out to the last area, the Silk Cradle, where we chopped some guys up and killed its boss, Vakalor, whom we just stunlocked with our trinket and smashed it into potato stew in a matter of seconds. Upon returning, we were able to take another doctrine. And of course, we took a sinful one, Gluttony of Cannibals. In which we get to choose a follower that will get eaten by the rest of them. Nice. It does lower faith by a lot, but not if you feed everyone hallucinogenics first. See ya, Braggy. And hello, Sin. After that spectacle, we did some more chores in the cult and went back crusading. And this time we met Shimura, crying about how the one who waits was mean to him. Boo hoo, -hoo little crybaby. And we continued through the spider cave to fight Fefar. After killing Fefar, we were approached by a floating celestial eye guy, speaking in only riddles. Like, what are you even saying? Upon returning back to the cult, we finally had enough devotion to unlock the mating tent. However, we still had to wait before we could actually use it, because we had yet to enslave the current god of death, also called the one who waits, who's also called Narinder. Who's also called, give the video a like if you're enjoying it. Yeah, we still had to enslave the god of death, but we were getting close. So we continued eating another follower and got back to the hunt to kill Haros. Who was really annoying to fight, not gonna lie. We did get a free sin, however. Back at the cult, Soap started descending. Bye. We also built an alehouse to drink with our buddies, which also generates sin. And more sin means more god babies. Now it's finally time to fight Shimura, who was actually a very fast grasshopper spider thing with crazy attacks. But he died in a really fashionable way. We did it, we killed all of the four bishops. Now there was only one more hurdle in the way to start the godly eugenics program. Time to see Narinder, the one who waits, the god of death, for the very last time. We got to pick a weapon, and we picked a gun. I walked up to him, and I got the option to be sacrificed and hand over the crown. Oh no. First, we had to fight Baal. And after that, aim. And then the one who waits. Who freaking clapped me? Okay, edit this one out. So we had to fight Baal. And after that, aim. And then, the one who waits. And we totally annihilated him, first try. Wait, what? Oh man, you look horrible. 
and you call me corrupt? This second phase was actually a lot easier than the first part of the fight. We clapped him. And we had a chance to kill him. But no, oh no, you're not done with us. I will spare you to serve me in eternity. The credits rolled, but this was not the end. We got back to the cult and the breeding program could finally start. And sadly, this is where I found out that I can't make babies with Narinder myself. But I picked the follower that was with me the longest and still lived. And we picked him to breed with Narinder. Go for it, guys. There is the godly egg. And now it was just a matter of waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And making another egg just because why not? And some more waiting. Until finally the first egg started to hatch. What? What the actual? It doesn't even look like Narinder. Or well... Yeah. It actually does. Um, the great pseudo parent I am, I called it a beautiful baby and named it Holy. Now it was just a matter of time before it grew up to be old enough to be my spouse. Which sounds a bit weird, but I'm a CK3 player so it's okay. And together we would rule the world. And this is, kids, how we made a child with a god. And we married it. So we could now together rule over our flock of randomly scraped together furry animals, which we torture in countless different ways. Well, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons. Check out my next video, you'll love it, or you don't. See you guys next time. Bye.